A very good morning to you, Natasha. Well, at this point in time, we've just seen um, Kabe Tlamini coming into court 15 and, of course, facing the judge there. And what we know now is that uh, his, actually, his case has been postponed to tomorrow because uh, they need to verify some details. But to just tell us more about that, we've got his attorney, and his name is uh, Munguez Indaga. Sir, thanks so much for your time. Can you just tell us what were the arguments and why was it postponed to tomorrow? Well, the state requested postponement on the basis that they have information uh, regarding the date of birth of Mr. of Mr. Lamin. They want to verify the correct date of birth in terms of his identification. In terms of and also yeah. the residential address, because the residential address that they have is the one from the university that is the student address. And it seems that uh, he's actually facing a lot of charges, more than what we see on paper. Yes, there's uh, about five charges. What are they? Uh, public violence, assault with uh, grievous bodily harm, theft, possession of dangerous weapon, and the fifth one is... Uh, I forgot the fifth one. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. So he's currently in custody. So how has he been, uh, uh, you know, dealing with the situation behind bars? Well, he's not coping. But we hope that tomorrow we'll have him out. So going ahead, what are some of the arguments that you, would you like to share with us that you have? We'll argue that in court. <laughs> I can't share that outside of court. But we hope that tomorrow we'll be able to get him out. Yes. Okay, so thanks so much for your time. Well, Natasha, that's one of uh, his uh, attorneys here. But just to get the student reaction, we are also joined by Veda SRC, or former Veda SRC President Shaira Kala. Shaira, what's your immediate reaction to that uh, postponement? Well, I mean, we're very thankful to the lawyers that at least they were mani they managed to uh, ensure that Mkleba will not have to go to San City. Um, today, he will actually spend the night here in the holding cell and then we'll come back tomorrow. Um, we are uh, very demoralized by the way in which the uh, random postponements and arrests have been taking place. Um, these ones are not so random, but we have other students at Hillbrow, for example, that were just standing in, in, in Bramfontein on Friday night and they were arrested. Um, we think that Nkrebo needs to be strong. Um, he has obviously a large following, students are behind him, um, but it's not about Nkrebo, it's about the greater issue. And many people are, 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 are being very clear to say that despite the arrests of student leaders around the country um, and the deliberate uh, elongated detainment of our student leaders, we will continue. Um, that you can cut all the flowers, but you cannot stop spring from coming. And we've seen that st students at the residences and all over the country are still resolute that we will not surrender and we will continue the fight for free quality and decolonized education. So if anything, this will mobilize people again to join the cause, to see how apartheid-like tactics are being used to intimidate and victimize us, um, to kill the movement and not to find solutions uh, to end this crisis that we face. And so we really um, call out to public society, uh, you know, to join us in this movement. This is not just a student struggle and we're clearly are being victimized and being intimidated. We need the support of everyone in South Africa to stand up against this injustice and to ensure that we can actually realize our goal um, and we can end this, this crisis in our country. Do you think police are actually uh, targeting student leaders to yes, stop this movement? Yes. I mean, I've been photographed by police um, on campus. We've been dispersed. Peaceful groups of students are dispersed. Last night, a student was taken to Limpopo. He was stripped naked. He was tortured. And we have to now hear from him today. Um, we, we can't really articulate the state brutality during these protests. They have been unprecedented. And we have faced so much of traumatic uh, encounters that students cannot possibly be expected to go and write exams and go back to the academic program if nothing is resolved and if we don't have some kind of um, you know a situation where all accountable parties come together and say that they are ready to end this madness um, our universities resemble war zones we are victimized we are intimidated and there's no way that we can retreat, retreat to some kind of warped form of normalcy and I think legally as well we are going to challenge the way in which we've been intimidated and victimized it is 
unfair that we are, we, are, we, are, we are made to look like the hooligans in this situation when instead we have just protested peacefully and the violence that the state has put um, on our universities and our vice chancellors have handed over uh, our universities to SAPS, that violence has created a situation where students have to now fend for themselves and protect our, our, our democratic right to protest because even on campus when we gather peacefully we're violently dispersed. Trinity Church was a place that we sought refuge at. That space was also violently uh, disrupted by police. Father Graham was shot at in front of the media, in front of society. Why are we not outraged by this? So now let's talk about the issue of curfew on campus. How have you been dealing with this? Students at residences have been resolute that they are not willing to accept any draconian apartheid-like curfew law uh, that stops students from moving around freely in our own university. Um, and so we have seen last night that uh, many students stood outside their residences in protest. They sang and they were peaceful. And yet again they were violently dispersed. Police shot rubber bullets into the residences. Private security went into the residences and remove students out of their beds. Women, right, were, were disrupted while they were sleeping, while they were actually uh, studying. So we are seeing that even students who have not been protesting are now coming forward and saying that actually we see the reason why we need to fight against this, because this is not normal. We are being violently uh, uh, abused in our own university and we need to stand up against it. We can't allow this to become the norm. Uh, our universities are spaces for intellectual engagement where we can critically analyze where we are in our society. And education is not just the stuff you learn in class. Standing outside and protesting and, and, and fighting for the right to learn um, for all, the right to learn to be accessible, for our universities to be accessible to the most marginalized, that is true education. That We are teaching society what the real fight should be. And I think we should be very proud of ourselves. We have been brave and courageous. Students who are coming out and still fighting despite this victimization and intimida intimidation, we say fight on, aluta continua, the struggle continues and we have a lot to do so we must get moving Shaira, just shortly the violence that we've seen erupt on campus I mean students have, of, have actually been involved as well uh, of course police we also them we also saw them in the mix just your take on that do you condone this from students I don't think that we can ever equate retaliation from students to state brutality to the very brutality that causes and creates a situation where students feel the need to fight for the right to protest. I don't think we can ever equate that and I also don't think that our vice chancellors can be obsessed with continuing the academic program in this abnormal way. We all want to write exams, we all want to go back to school but we also want to fight for the right of others, those ones who are the real silent majority out there, to have the same rights that we have and I think that it's a selfless struggle that students are fighting inside our universities because we could easily go back to class and let everything retreat to some kind of abnormal normalcy but we are saying that we want to find a solution to this we want everyone to come to the table we need our leaders to be mature here and they are not showing any maturity or leadership in the situation we've come up with models we've come up with solutions what are our vice chancellors who are supposedly thought leaders in society what are they doing to help find solutions to this crisis because we don't see them at our university Adam Habib has become the phantom of its university. We haven't seen him. So we are really appealing to society to support the struggle and to support a solution, not to support brutality and state violence, to stop students from protesting for a just cause, because essentially that is the fight we are fighting right now. From here, where are we heading to? Are we still continuing with the shutdown? We are going to have meetings with different stakeholders in the university. Exams are approaching, but we have seen that students who have been on the picket lines with us um, have been resolute to say that we cannot actually write exams in this in this situation. Uh, we, we need to find a solution first. We need to get some kind of response from government, a commitment uh, to, to, to actually come to the table and find a solution for free, decolonized and quality education, not in our lifetime, but now. Um, because every year, if we don't do this, then every year we'll be in the same position where we have to go and fight against fees. And we're not willing to do that. We've really crossed the line here and we've said that actually we are not willing to come every year and fight for this. If fees must fall is not going to be an annual event. So we're not going to be giving up, but we are willing to change tactics if different parties come to the table. Talking about different parties, just shortly. The university have actually indicated that they did offer you that opportunity to speak to them. For example, on Thursday, we expected you guys to meet with them 5 p.m. It was called off. Why? 
Well, so I think the university is being extremely disingenuous in the situation. I mean, firstly, we had the General Assembly. They made a commitment to free, quality and decolonized education there. What have they done to realize that in this time frame, apart from trying to stifle and kill the protests? They've done nothing. Um, the meeting was called off for various reasons. Some of us disagreed with it being called off. We thought that it would have shown some kind of maturity. But the university itself was not willing to negotiate and come to the table to ensure that all students would be able to be at that meeting. Um, they wanted to have it at five o'clock. They were unwilling. They wanted the academic program to continue. That tears students up because how are they supposed to be expected to go to class and to take this issue seriously? The students who did not want the protest to continue, the small group of majority white students uh, called Take Back Vets, they had meetings with the Vice Chancellor. They've been meeting with him. He's been going to public meetings with them. Why is it so difficult for him to come to the table when we are the ones who are asking him to come to the table? And we've said that we're willing to talk to him. We've been waiting for four weeks now to talk to him. Um, but now all of a sudden when there was clearly a negotiation to have a meeting, he, he, he did not want to concede to some of the conditions, which were very fair. Um, and then he blamed the cancellation of the meeting on us, like he did with the General Assembly. So it's clearly a propaganda that game that is being played here and we, we can't be fooled by it. Okay, thanks so much for your time. Uh, Shaira Kala, the former Vets Associate President, of course, uh, saying that, well, they will still continue with deliberations, but of course the question remains, are we going to see an end to this debacle on the Vets University's main campus or even other campuses? Uh, so we will be monitoring the situation uh, right there, the main campus, but just a small group of students, of course, meeting there, as you can see, uh, if I can just ask my camera person to uh, pan that side. So they are singing, of course, in solidarity uh, of those students that have been arrested, including their student leader, Mkrebo Damini. So we will be monitoring the situation uh, as it continues here. Back to you in studio. Well, thank you very much to our reporter there, Maha Ketle Motlabe. He was coming to us live from the Hillbound Magistrates Court. Now, moving on to quite a focused topic of today. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the death of the then president of Mozambique, Samora Michel. Michel